There are many things that make this stretch of the New River a special treasure. This ancient river has a fascinating story that it's waiting to share. All it needs is you. Come take your own long and winding journey on the New River and find out. Despite its name, the New River is a very old river. Its long and winding journey began millions of years ago. No one knows for sure how old the New River is but scientists have various theories of how it came to be somewhere between 200 and 500 million years ago. One theory proposes that when the African and North American continental plates collided, a high mountain range was formed that stretched across the entire state of North Carolina and beyond. This collision lasted millions of years, and during that time, this mountain range was compressed and pushed upwards. The New River began as a river that flowed west from the mountains and gradually eroded upriver into the mountains and into North Carolina. As the continental plates separated, most of the rivers in North Carolina began to flow east into the newly formed Atlantic Ocean while the New River continued to flow northwest, cutting a deep gap from one side of the Appalachian Mountains to the other. However it came to be, scientists are certain that the New River is a very old river. How do they know? They look at the river today. Several characteristics indicate its age. The way that the New River winds and meanders is an indication of an old river. That it flows slower than other mountain streams and that it flows northwest across the Appalachians are also signs of it being very old. Today, water in the New River begins its 2,000-mile journey in the mountain streams of Watauga County in North Carolina. It flows north through Virginia and West Virginia, where it flows into the Kanawha River, then to the Ohio and the Mississippi, eventually flowing into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's begin our journey on the North Carolina section of the New River with a look to the more recent past, our past. Farming has long been a part of the history of the New River Valley from the time of its earliest inhabitants. Artifacts found along the river tell us that American Indians lived and farmed here. The short growing season and the isolation of the New River Valley limited the settlement of the area by both American Indians and European explorers. With no roads and passage to the east blocked by mountains, early explorers found the valley unsuitable for large settlements, and it became known as the Lost Province. Peter Jefferson, the father of Thomas Jefferson, was one of the first to explore the valley when he surveyed the North Carolina-Virginia border in 1749. Bishop Augustus Gottlieb Spangenberg came in 1752 looking for a location for a new Moravian church settlement. His diary entries paint a stark picture of the land he found. We were completely lost, and whichever way we turned, we were walled in. We are in a region that has perhaps been seldom visited since the creation of the world. We are some 70 to 90 miles from the last settlement in North Carolina and have come over terrible mountains and through dangerous ways. Part of the way, we climbed on hands and knees, dragging after us the loads we had taken from the back of the horses, for had we not unsaddled them, they would have fallen backward down the mountain. Understandably discouraged, Spangenberg turned back east and established the settlement in present-day Winston-Salem. It wasn't until the 1800s that the first towns were settled. The Europeans who settled in the New River Valley came from England, Germany, 
Ireland and Scotland. The isolation of the valley forced them to be self-sufficient. For a century, they made their clothes, built their shelters, and hunted or grew their own food. But with more towns springing up and roads connecting them, the landscape was becoming more and more settled and received a far more favorable report in the diary of geologist and botanist Elisha Mitchell in 1828. Rode down to Jefferson. The pleasant smell of hay, the delicious coolness of the air, the shadows of the mountains and the luxuriant foliage, and the blocks of chestnuts extending up their sides made the ride delightful. In the early 1900s, the first railroad arrived in the New River Valley, and life began to change. Access to outside markets made it possible for farmers to grow and sell cash crops like beans and tobacco. Dairy cattle and cheese making also became very important to the economy of the region. While the 20th century brought more roads in progress and the New River Valley became more and more connected to the outside world, life here still revolved around farming and small communities. In 1965, this way of life was threatened when the Appalachian Power Company applied for a license to dam the river and build reservoirs for water storage. This dam would have flooded land along a 27-mile stretch of the New River in North Carolina and much of the woodlands and farmland surrounding it. As opposition to the proposal grew, citizen groups, state agencies, and federal agencies worked together in the fight to protect this historic river and the scenic area surrounding it. A decade of hearings, litigation, and legislative action followed, with the fate of the new river hanging in the balance. Finally, in 1975, the North Carolina General Assembly declared a 26 and a half mile stretch of the new river a state scenic river. In 1976, the federal government designated the same portion of the river as a part of the National Wild and Scenic River System, and construction of the dam and reservoirs was prohibited. The New River was preserved, and New River State Park was born. Since that time, the New River has proven to be one of North Carolina's most important ecological and recreational resources. It provides a healthy, natural habitat for a wide range of plants and animals. And it's a wonderful place to experience nature that is enjoyed by thousands of people every year. New River State Park is not like most parks. Most of the park is found on the river itself beginning where Dog Creek joins the New River and ending 26 and a half miles down the river where it crosses the Virginia State Line. The park also has over 2,300 acres of land at various spots along the river. Protecting the quality of the water in the river is one of the park's most important missions. And this exceptionally clean water is worth protecting. The state of North Carolina has classified the park section of the New River as outstanding resource waters. The New River has also been designated as an American Heritage River. Protecting the water quality in the river means protecting the land in the watershed that drains into the river. The upper New River watershed includes all of Ashe and Allegheny counties and a portion of Watauga County as well. All the rain that falls in this region eventually flows to the New River and that rain can carry polluted runoff into the river. The most important line of defense for the river is its riparian zone. The riparian zone is the narrow strip of land that borders rivers and streams. The key to protecting water quality in the river is to have a healthy and highly vegetated riparian zone to provide a natural buffer to trap sediment and filter pollutants and keep them from reaching the river. A healthy riparian zone has a variety of grasses, shrubs, and trees and supports a wide range of wildlife, both in and out of the water. Park staff and volunteers work hard year-round to keep the river healthy. 
farmers also do their part to protect water quality by using best management practices that reduce runoff of fertilizers, animal waste, and soil from fields. The people who call the New River Valley home are working to preserve a lifestyle that they have enjoyed for centuries. You can help too by stepping lightly in the riparian zones, never polluting the river, and learning more about the river and riparian zones. The New River is a unique resource and experience that was saved for us to enjoy. Now it's our turn to protect the New River for future generations.